Thank you, Daniel, uh, for your words. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity before we jump to our next speaker uh, to make a test on the room so we know who we are here. So I would kindly ask you to raise your hand if you come from a university. Okay. Can you please raise your hand if you come from a company? Great. <laughs> Can you raise your hand, please, if you come from a public uh, administration or a public organization? And finally, can you raise your hand those who know what a kick is? Okay, so 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 <laughs> so we have a, a good knowledgeable audience today. I'm very happy to to know that. So I would like to uh, now that we are speaking of the kick. Uh, you know, this is a partnership. I want to thank also the mem the partners of our kick, and in particular the partners of uh, that have made this collocation center possible. Uh, we have here representatives from uh, Min C4I, yeah, from the south of France. We have representatives from the University of Porto. We have friends from MediaPro, and um, uh, we have tech friends of Technali. I'm sorry, I don't I'm not wearing my glasses. I cannot see you, but and all the organizations that have uh, helped us through the years. So thank you so much uh, for your support. And now I will introduce our next speaker. Uh, she's uh, Dr. Daria Tatai, Chair of the Supervisory Board of EIT Culture and Creativity. <laughs> Daria is founder and CEO of Tatai Innovation is an, uh, and, and is also an independent board member before she became the chair of EIT Culture and Creativity, uh, she, of the supervisory board of EIT Culture and Creativity, she has been serving as uh, founding, um, the founding, the governing board of EIT, supervisory board of EIT Manufacturing, and a number of boards in private, public, and non-profit sector. Thanks, Patricia, a lot. Welcome, everyone. I must say that I'm partly based in Barcelona, so it's real a pleasure to be here with you. I know you, many of you, from many years. And I'm coming here with uh, a few messages wearing different hats. I was asked to talk about the European vision for culture and creative industries. In my work for the European Commission, we've been shaping, as high-level advisor from Carlos Moydas uh, to current commissioners, we've been shaping the vision of what is uh, the Europe we want to develop beyond the crisis of the COVID, uh, beyond the geopolitical crisis, and how do we, uh, as a union, address these challenges? And what we proposed was that we must be truthful to the European values. This is why the first thing to do is to protect the most vulnerable, then to prepare for the upcoming challenges, which will surely come, mega crisis, uh, again and again, and then to transform uh, the system. Because Europe has been designed out of the mission and vision to make Europeans happy if we come back to the origins of Europe. And somehow on this way towards, we've been losing this happiness that's been driving the power of what we have become as a society. And there is a strong belief that culture and creative industries can revi revitalize this vision for a happy Europe. I'm sa saying a happy Europe because some years ago I was in the European Parliament and uh, late president of France, uh, Giscard d'Estaing, came to speak um, for his foundation, Reimagine Europa. And he said, let's make Europe happy again. And this was the first time I have heard in a public debate this very simple mission, let's make Europe happy again. Now, it's easy said, it's very difficult to do. And um, when we translate this, um, uh, the vision for Europe beyond the crisis as protect, prepare and transform, this is really about a resilient society. And I believe that this concept of resilience is coming from the top of the governments and from the bottom up of those micro entrepreneurs, self-employed, especially in our, uh, in, in our sector, um, going together to create 
an independent uh, union with technological sovereignty, ownership of the data we have, and reindustrialization near shoring so that we can give back jobs to the Europeans and create a sustainable future. This is the European vision. And I must say that uh, when back in 2008 we were uh, creating, uh, operationalizing the EIT and launching the first kicks, we could not underestimate the power of the kick model. I was so super happy seeing that you know what is a kick. But let me maybe put some core elements why the kick is what a kick is. So number one, um, by default, even here in this fantastic Barcelona ecosystem, uh, my observation would be that people tend to work in silos. And this is why, because simply we're comfortable <laughs> working in our comfort zone, government within government, uh, academia within academia, large business within large business, small business within small business. And integrating this ecosystem, this innovation ecosystem, is paramount to really understand the emerging trends, prepare policies and strategies, how to tackle them, and then prepare people uh, with skills, with mindset, uh, with attitudes, to be able to take the opportunity and take it forward. It's not easy to work across the silos. This is why <laughs> the kick um, brings the different partners, and I was thrilled to see so many representatives of the private sector. Now, why would partners want to work together? What's in it for them? There are different things, because their motivations are very different. From um, what I observe, what I know, what I researched, and what I looked over the years, the EIT and the kicks were out there, the motivations of uh, industry uh, remain the same. They're really interested in talent. The people coming out <laughs> on the job market from universities, and how these people can help them design and implement better innovation strategies to compete globally, but also to develop new business models that are very disruptive. Let me just give you one example. A few years ago, no one thought that technology companies are media companies, correct? <laughs> and we thought about our sector as audiovisual, uh, as design, as fashion, uh, as heritage. But no one thought that actually the biggest competition to our sector will come from an unexpected angle of large, technological companies who are taking a large chunk of gaming, uh, a significant uh, chunk of the media, of, of streaming, and they are suddenly eating up. It's not only uh, that the uh, software is eating up the world, the world to use the, the quote, but it's really the large companies. And if you look at what has happened to the global industry over the last 20 years, and the 10, last, the ten biggest companies, eight did not exist 30 years ago, and they are all based on the networking uh, technologies that enable uh, massive integration of value, massive integration of users, customers, partners. And they are slowly and steadily, even if we look at the current crisis in, in Hollywood, what is happening about the big streaming companies and the creative talent, these big companies impose certain logic. And whether we like it or not, this will be the trend of the economy. And as Europeans, we can ask a question. Do we take a defensive strategy or do we experiment, fail fast, prototyping new solutions? And the kick is this environment which allows large players to play on a safe ground, to be connected to the ecosystem, to the very smart people across different silos, and then bring their creativity and skills into, the, into their organization. Now, what is in for universities. Well, um, we published recently a paper on the future of European universities where we pointed that uh, the last crisis was a really unique chance for universities to, to transform their um, uh, power in the society, to go out of their silo uh, of, um, of an um, ivory tower. And this was easily done, but during the COVID where digitalization, uh, new methods, new curricula, new ways of bringing the relationship between tutors and peer-to-peer -peer learning were all on the agenda. And we see the system revert back. And we do need this small fraction of the university uh, leaders who are interested in innovation entrepreneurship 
an engagement strategy and tapping on the global talent to bring them at the forefront of collaboration with the KIC. Because we understand that at the core, the universities have their own strategy, but there must be a small chunk of the organization who want to work across the silos and want to work at the, across the silos at the strategic level. When we look at the research, what has happened with the research, which is another angle of the knowledge triangle, is that there was a big push towards open research and open innovation. Now, what we have seen with the change geopolitical situation because of the artificial intelligence, because of the data uh, ownership, uh, because of the very protective strategies coming out of um, uh, Asia or the US for that matter, Europe needs to rethink how do we protect what we developed and what we invested in and how do we allow that this is the value is created and captured in Europe. While staying open, we need to be smarter how to leverage this potential. And the kick for research institutes is a good playground, again, to see how to create value. And I'm raising this again and again, this value creation, because a kick um, has a very weird DNA. And a DNA, you know, that some contest very much, and for good reasons, and it's this financial sustainability DNA. Now, the thinking behind this is that if a kick is not entrepreneurial, why would it attract entrepreneurial part of large organizations, <laughs> of, of research institutes, of universities? And this concept of the financial sustainability means that we are thinking beyond the grant logic, beyond the traditional status quo. We want to be experimenters in our own right. And one key success of those kick community is one of the kicks that recently was valued at over a billion euro, and it spun uh, a number, a number of fascinating uh, technological solutions to, to for clean energy, and also created uh, enormous um, pool of entrepreneurial companies, out of which uh, three have become unicorns in their own right. And I'm saying this because we may say culture and creativity is not about uh, making money. And there is absolutely a bigger mission that we have uh, as culture. But culture can be understood uh, in a way of, um, uh, of heritage, um, or culture can also be understood as a synonymous for society. And, and this is uh, why what we propose is that out of all the creative talent and out of the society that we, that we tap upon in the ecosystem, we do want to create a trusted environment for those creative entrepreneurial people to come together, fast prototype new solutions, and have our community to scale these solutions at a different level. I'm saying this because um, as much as I believe in um, the power of government, and as much as I believe in the uh, power of individuals to transform their futures, Coming from emerging markets of Central and Eastern Europe, I'm Polish, I lived in six different countries, but I still at heart see what has happened to my country, where we started 30 years ago and wh where we are today, as one of the most amazing large-scale transformation stories, both economically and socially, where our education is one of the top three, four education systems in Europe. This is why we need to be a driving force to change the educational system. Um, our society is highly co cohesive. Um, the Gini coefficient is one of the lowest among emerging economies. This is why we cannot leave people behind. We don't want a society in Europe that are a few rich and a big uh, group of excluded uh, people. We want to bring people be along with us as we transform Europe. At the same time, looking what is happening around the globe, I don't think we can afford to do things at a pace that we've been doing, having the resources we have. We must accelerate. We must accelerate. And we must empower those people who want to take this mission forward. What we aspire as a, as a, as a knowledge and innovation community, as the EIT culture and creativity, and speaking on behalf of the supervisory board, I must say that we do believe that with a strategic vision that we have and with the amazing uh, types and number of organizations that the Bernd and the team have managed to bring together, we will be able 
to transform the system, to prepare our creative talent for a more entrepreneurial, successful future, and then to protect the valuable parts in our culture and heritage that needs to be protected to keep the European values at the forefront. Thank you very much.